let's say that we didn't like the dual list approach for storing our graph, so we're gonna come up with another approach. This one is called an adjacency matrix. So will the shape, what will be the shape of this 2D array? Will it be rectangular, square? What do you think? Rectangular. Well, technically it will be rectangular, but it will always be what? Square. It'll always be a square. There is my adjacency matrix. And what I want to know is what are gonna be the column headers and what are gonna be the row headers and what will be the content? I'm trying to describe this graph using a matrix. Miss Olivia, what do you think is going to be the headers here for the columns and the rows? It's going to be the nodes. Now I have an important question for you, Olivia. Do you think we want to use the names of the nodes or the numbers of the nodes? We need to use the indexes of the nodes. So here it's just going to be, and keep in mind that we still have our auxiliary list here, which basically has in here a, B, C, etc., which basically allows us to translate from the names to the numbers. We still have that part, but now we have this matrix. And now the question is, now in terms of the diagonals, it doesn't really matter what we put in there. I'm just gonna, we could put, I'll give you a hint. Every entry in this uh, matrix is gonna be either a zero or a one. I'm gonna just start off by putting zeros in the diagonal. And my next question is, what does the rest of this matrix look like? How does it describe the edges for this graph? Please, you have it, sir? Go ahead. I put a one if there's an edge. So basically, uh, here, a zero refers to A, right? And B is one, so then for B, so let me just put this up on top so make it a little easier for us. And you can see there's an edge between A and B, so we're gonna put a one here. Will this matrix be symmetric or not? What would it mean if it wasn't symmetric? What kind of graph would we have if the matrix was not symmetric? Okay, Ben, what would it mean? Complex. There's a particular, okay, Miss Olivia, what am I looking for? Directed. It would be directed then. You said that it would be, it would be not complex, it would be non-simple, you're right but it would specifically be directed. That would mean that there would be an edge this way and no edge the other way. But we're not gonna talk about that right now. So we're gonna just go back to having a symmetric matrix. And so every single place that there's a one on this side, there's gonna be a mirror one on this side. Mr. Mulcahy, sir, if I had a weighted graph like this, let's say put some weights here, five, four, two, 19. How would the adjacency matrix change, sir? Instead of putting a one, you just put the weight. So instead of putting ones and zeros, I would put the weights in here. And if I do that, a lot of times the numbers put into these diagonals here are infinity. And in this representation, if there's no edge, we can often use, instead of using a zero, some implementations use infinity. Now, there's a practical problem with using infinity inside a Java program because infinity is not a number. So we have to represent infinity using a number, and I would like to talk about some possibilities. Could we use negative one to represent infinity? When can we use it? When can we not use it? Do you think it would be okay to use minus one to represent infinity in here? When might it be okay, when might it not? It is gonna be okay for most graphs, but when might it not be okay? When there are negative weights, then we can't use negative one because that might be a weight then. That would be, if you do zero over zero inside of Java, you're gonna get this thing called not a number. And this is like sitting on a grenade. You don't wanna be messing with that, okay? You can't get an actual infinity. Right. So, well, I'm going to go over two other possibilities with you, and I think you'll like one of these. Can we use zero? When can we use zero and when can we not use zero? We can use zero as long as it's not one of the weights. The other number that most people often use is like a really big number. How do we say really big integer in Java? Yes, sir. We have to do the max value. We would just use integer max. That would be, that's a common thing to use to represent infinity. That's the largest integer possible in Java. 
in 32-bit integer. So just keep that in mind when we code this. You are going to get out some paper and pencil and get together with your partner and try to determine the big O for the, the two graph questions I described. So both the speed uh, of those two operations and then also what is the memory usage of this graph. And please try and figure those things out. So I wanna know the big O of finding all the vertices that are connected to a given vertex. I want to know the big O of how much time it takes to find out if two vertices are connected. And then I want to know what is the big O of storing this matrix. That's the memory part of it. I, now this is an important exercise because in co college you're gonna have a lot of exams where they're gonna give you an algorithm, they're gonna say, calculate the big O. So we're doing it on a relatively simple idea here. I wanna know how fast is it and how much memory does it burn? <laughs> Okay, so we have this adjacency matrix representation of our graph, and now what we'd like to do is start off by talking about speed, and we want to see if it's got any advantages or disadvantages over the dual list representation that we were looking at earlier. And my first question is, if I want to know how long it takes to find out all the vertices that are connected to vertex, all the vertices that are connected to vertex A, how long is that gonna take? So it will be O of N, or if you want, O of V, because all I do is I just search this one row. And this row has N columns, because that's how many vertices there are. So you can see that it's gonna take O of, and I'm just gonna use V here, sir, because I've just used that in all my other, uh, but what you said about N is also correct, okay? So that's gonna be how long it takes. now. If I want to know, are two vertices connected, let's say I want to know if E and F have an edge between them, how long will that take? It'll be O of K. Now, this assumes, of course, that the translation from the name to the number on this side is, is hashed, and so that's O of K, so that's not going to really impact these calculations here. So how do these compare to the dual list representation we looked at before? It's much better, you see that, right? They're basically, this one is as fast as possible and this one is still very good. It's dependent on the number of vertices and not dependent on the number of edges. Edges, potentially big number, vertices, smaller number. What's bad about it? It takes up a huge amount of memory and it turns out that if the underlying graph has a large number of edges, if it's close to complete, this is a great algorithm to use. This is a great representation to use. But if the graph is what is known as a sparse graph, then this is not a good representation because you're using too much memory. You're not only storing which edges there are, you're also storing which edges there are not. You see that, right? So now let me give you an example and you tell me if this would be a good representation or not. There used to be this app called Facebook. Now only old people like me use it. But we have these nodes here, and they represent people. So this is me, and this is my daughter. And we'll say that an edge means what on Facebook? Yes, sir? Friendship. We're friends, right? So what I want to know is, and Facebook, does anybody know how many users Facebook has? It's a little over a billion, okay? A little over a billion. And what I want to know is, would the adjacency matrix be a good way of representing the friendship on Facebook? Yes or no? Any Facebook users here? Anybody want to admit to being a regular Facebook user? Okay. All right. So I would like to know, Ms. Teleska, do you think that the adjacency matrix would be a good way to represent friendship in Facebook? It would not. Why? Uh, Katie, if I was to use an adjacency matrix for Facebook friendship, how many rows and how many columns would there be? It would be a billion rows and a billion columns. Calculate how much memory that is. That's like hundreds or thousands of peta petabytes of memory. That's big even by today, huge by today's standards even. So that's not practical. And then what would be most of the contents of the array? Zero. Zero. So that's an example where it will be a terrible application for that.